Look at now the situation of HIV AIDS in Nyanza. No leader is talking about that. Look at the roads, the health, the education, unemployment. And they're but, receiving but money but so far. Well, listening to you, I cannot tell what exactly will be the clincher here. Because, yes, we can discuss, and it's well and good to discuss the whole uh, uh, corruption issue across the board and say governors are to blame here and there across the country. But remember the ICC message was very easy. It but was simple to understand to the general electorate. When Assam come out, what do you think will be the clincher this time around? What will actually move the electorate? Fred, I actually disagree that uh, corruption and cost of living will be major conversations in the upcoming election. Partly because, of course, uh, corruption is shared across, uh, you know, uh, the opposition and the government in terms of even the county governments and each and every leader, of course, uh, there are certain issues that we can hold them accountable to. The issue of the cost of living, of course, right now it's a major issue and I think it's uh, dominating headlines, but uh, I'm sure some mechanisms will be put in place uh, to address it and it will be overtaken uh, by other more prominent issues. Now, going back to 2013 so that we can look at uh, 2017, uh, the opposition uh, called that time position themselves in terms of reforms and democracy, but there was a bigger issue here, that was the national sovereignty, and I think uh, uh, Jubilee that time took advantage of the, uh, the then cases that were facing the two leaders and they were able to make it an issue and people focused on that. Now when you look at 2017, I think one of the issues that will definitely come up uh, when you talk about opposition unity, you know, the National Super Alliance, one of the issues is inclusivity, uh, the sense that we are trying to bring all communities uh, together and there's a sense in which of course they will accuse uh, Jubilee of not uh, being all inclusive and uh, taking care of the interests of the different people. Mm -hmm. This was one of the issues that could be uh, a big driver and a big conversation uh, in this uh, coming election. But I also have to say that um, uh, you know eventually uh, towards the end uh, typically Kenyans of course retreat to their ethnic uh, considerations. But even and that retreating is actually informed by the main, uh, the main point of discussion. Absolutely. That's because even the ICC they retreated because the two leaders who were there the, 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 their communities were treated as a block to defend their own. My point is, people eventually will go with the message that is being uh, driven by the uh, you know, po political leaders. But my point is, if you look at it, people tend to vote more or they're inclined, the way their tribes are voting, that is how people tend to make their decisions. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the real issues uh, that would appeal to you and I in terms of, uh, you know, the ordinary Mwananchi wants to know, am I assured of a better quality life? And I think depending on how the National Super Alliance or Jubilee uh, sends its message to make sure that people, when they look at it, especially the marginalized, because we know uh, NASA and the Jubilee, uh, you know, have brought together the five major communities in this country. Mm -hmm. But you see the smaller tribes and the marginalized groups, they are the ones that have to look and see where do I feel my interests are best represented or articulated? And therefore, they have to think about uh, the messaging. So cost of living uh, definitely is important because it's a big issue right now. But towards the end, I think issues will become uh, clearer once the official campaigns uh, kick in. Joy, of course, issues <coughs> like corruption, cost of living are not new issues. They were there in 2013, they were there in 2007, 2002. It has never been the game changer. Corruption high cost of living has never really been a game changer when it comes to elections. Do you really think it will be the hook, that these issues will form the hook that uh, will actually determine where we go come August? You know, the difference with this time around is that when you talk about the cost of living, it has gotten to a level where people are suffering in levels that we have not seen before. Talk to any businessman right now. They're talking about how uh, the invoices are not being paid. There's no business. There's no money seeming to be circulating. Campaign time was a time when there was a lot of money circulating in Kenya. This time around we find that there's precious little to go around. Talking, talking to printers or to people who are in the industry, they'll tell you that this is not what we are used to. This is not how it's supposed to be. When you see a feature about a family having one meal a day, and even that one meal is uji, it's not a, a proper meal, tells you there's something wrong. So when you're looking at corruption now, what we're saying is it's not that services are not being delivered, no. It's that I've been given a service, but the service might be costing me twice what it is supposed mm -hmm. to cost me. We're looking at the numbers. I'm not an economist, but when you look at the numbers, inflation at an, a, a five-year high, this is something that we cannot sniff away. We look at the cost of the dollar versus uh, the shilling. Right now you need 103 shillings and more, actually, to buy one U.S. dollar compared to where we were five years ago. When you look at the national debt, we are not, what is it, 3 trillion or 4 trillion in that range. Whereas when this uh, government is taking power, we are in the range of 1 trillion. Now, those numbers is not to say 
that service has not been rendered. That's not <coughs> true. We have seen some service. But the argument is service has been rendered, but at what cost? And so we have a situation whereby even as KRA is trying to raise money, they are finding it difficult to, fi to enlarge the bracket. Why? Because even the people who customarily pay taxes are now paying less taxes because they're not making as much money as they would. Look at the cost of doing business in Kenya. It's ridiculously high. We had a promise that power was going to come down mm -hmm. and that the cost of the unit of electricity was going to be based so that the cost of doing business is actually something that is manageable. The opposite has happened. Right now, there's the excuse of we're using a lot more generators. There's been a drought, so the hydroelectric is not working properly. The geothermal has not been exploited full potential. Okay, so what about the sun? What about but, alternative but you, energy? Let's, let's be honest. Uh, you know, some of these things do not uh, really uh, uh, elicit any emotion in the Kenyan voter. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might be angry, but the government will come or whoever will convince you that, yeah, that one I can sort it out. And we're actually seeing attempts towards that, that uh, once uh, you try to make corruption, uh, within government as a major problem, we're seeing attempts to actually paint the leaders of the opposition as also them being uh, entangled in some of these corruption scandals. Now, s trying to contain something like corruption allegations could be easy, but what will be the clincher that when one uh, side uses it, the other side will be totally lost? for a, a comeback, that they will not be able to counteract. The ICC issue was one. Uh, when, exactly. uh, when TNA and URP came together and made it their issue, the uh, court coalition was not able to uh, have a comeback in as far as that was concerned. And that is the one I'm looking for. Things like high cost of living already, you bring it up, the president says uh, he has already directed parliament to do something about it. He could actually be able to sort it out in a month or so. But what will be the clincher? What will be the clincher, either for Jubilee or NASA, no, but that's, that that's once the point you pull that card, the other side will be totally lost. That's the point I was trying to make. Corruption has been an old problem. We've had it ever since. But the difference with what we are seeing this time around is that before there used to be corruption, but the crimes used to trickle. There used to be money circulating in the economy. Now we have a sort of, of corruption whereby we know there's large sums of money disappearing, but unlike before where somehow it would find its way back into circulation, we have a situation where all the taps seem to have run dry. And that has driven not just the common wananchi to despair, even the fellow politicians are mm -hmm. at a loss. That's why you can see NASA coming very strongly on the issue of corruption. And as we know, all the principals in NASA have been in government and must have their fingers in the cookie jar as well. Yes. So it's one of those questions where the difference with this time and what has been there before is in how the perception of the general public is. Before, like somebody would reminisce and said, in more days, yes, they used to steal, mm -hmm. but at least you would find the mm -hmm. crumbs being distributed. This time around, you find the political parties are collecting money from members of the public, telling them that you're going to run, help you run for office, and at the end of the day, they keep all their money and they don't deliver on the goods. Yes. So that is the difference this time around, and that disgruntlement is such that it may be enough to actually not form uh, an entirely coalescing question uh, around the elections, but it might be enough for some voters to say, you know what, we've had five years of this, they're not changing the script. If it's five more years of what we mm -hmm. have now, we'd rather roll the dice with the other side. Uh, yet yet uh, it, it, uh, we run the risk of just having another ping pong. Uh, government says, uh, uh, the opposition says, government, uh, there's too much corruption in government. Government says, yes, uh, Jubilee says, even you've been uh, in government and this, they can actually list some of the uh, uh, corrupt dealings that they allege some of these uh, uh, opposition principles have been entangled in. Surely, to avoid that kind of ping pong, or do you think with that kind of ping pong, uh, Buena Bonke, that uh, corruption will indeed become the clincher? It could just end up being one of those discussions that end up any, uh, don't end up anywhere. I think uh, yeah, it's a big challenge. The corruption has been there since independence. Uh, Ken during Kenyatta, the f uh, first prime minister, Honorable uh, Delet Mze Kenyatta, there was corruption on, on its own level by then. Moi for 21 years, there was corruption. And now Kibaki and uh, Kibaki and Raila, the coalition government, we had corruption allegations and some serious, uh, the Vijana money, the May scandal, and some other issues. And you believe we've also faced those corruption allegations. Now, remember when uh, some of the cabinet secretaries, uh, they, were, they, they, they were summoned, you know, because of some corruption allegations, the president sacked them. Again, it uh, will be quite unfair if somebody is saying right now that uh, Jubilee has not, has, has not done something to do with the, to discipline these corrupt leaders. I think that would be a very insensitive leader or a politician. 
Another thing, the structure, actually the, the next parliament, I think the president should create the structure. We need to work on the system. Mm -hmm. Once we have a serious system, uh, it's not a matter of attacking individuals. We just create a system. If you are a corrupt leader, we, you're being arrested, you will auction all your properties, plus your kids, plus the wife. I think that people will be so disciplined. When you are in the office, in public office, you have no mandate to take any public funds. Another thing I would like to, to disagree with my colleagues. In 2013, it was not a matter of ICC. That's what made President Uru Kenyatta to win that election. You know, they came up as young leaders who are ready to change the life status of our people. And it was based on the agenda. That's why they were elected. The ICC was a personal thing. Remember when the opposition leader told them, you should not involve Kenyans into this issue. You go to Hague and handle this issue as an individual. And he agreed with the, with the former prime minister. He said, okay, fine. I will take it as my personal issue. Wanakumwai, are you being genuinely <laughs> honest when you say that the ICC was not a game changer when it, it came to 2013 it election? It was, it was a game changer to people of Central and the Rift Valley, but not other Kenyans who voted President Uhuru Kenyatta. Okay. If my brother is at, Hague, is at the Hague, yes, I will stand with him. I'm also a human being. If I have such a case, mm -hmm. I will be crying behind the scenes even if I'm the head of state. So. President Uru Kenyatta had friends, he's a father, he's a brother, he has a community. So people had to back him up because that, he had an and issue. That, and that was a game changer. But now, Bwana Kamau, you, uh, you said something very interesting. But the issue of inclusivity, if at all, uh, that could be probably the key game changer. If at all, it, it does have the potential. Don't you see the risk, therefore, of us going back to something very negative, that here it could be a case of this number probably 40 against 2? Well, Fred, uh, maybe looking at uh, the big picture, of course NASA uh, coming together, their initial state admission was to kick Jubilee out of power. And I think that has been consistent. We're saying any one of us can uh, kick Jubilee out of power. And I think on the other hand, of course, what we have seen coming uh, from Jubilee is, uh, you know, Uhuru Tano Tena. They are talking about continuity. But you remember NASA has a seven-point plan which they have shared. But I am sure if you ask any NASA supporter, they cannot list mm -hmm. uh, those seven points. Uh, but one of them, of course, is the issue of inclusivity. The only challenge with that, of course, is by saying we are inclusive, and remember what I said, now that we tend to focus on personalities, if you look at within NASA, even if there are five principles, is three major tribes are represented. And then if you look at Jub uh, uh, Jubilee at the top, it is two uh, major mm -hmm. tribes represented. Together, those are five. Where do the other uh, uh, 38 or 37 go, depending on how many tribes you believe uh, exist in Kenya? And the problem with that, by talking about inclusivity, and yet at other times making statements that imply actually that uh, we are focusing on this particular side, or these are our strongholds, mm -hmm. uh, and because all the numbers being thrown around, when you, whether you talk about the 10 million uh, strong, or even when you talk about Jubilee, talks about 70 plus 1, those are calculations uh, based on the IABC numbers, but again you look at different counties and you say now that this particular county the, um, uh, the, the dominant uh, community is this one then we can say that all the votes belong to us that means then uh, that even the political players they are not so focused on the issue based uh, politics but is trying to mobilize uh, numbers you know ethnic balkanization and decide that this is the kingpin and unfortunately mm -hmm. that has always been uh, our way of campaigning by trying to show that and I think this started when you talked uh, in 2007 where the initial Pentagon was assembled and there was a feeling that we are put together a strong coalition against this particular side and we run the risk of course of dividing the country and having a very divisive uh, election. The media should also come on board as we look outside we must also look at ourselves. Are we also helping Wanainchi understand what are the critical issues? What should inform? How do I evaluate a leader? When I want to vote for a president or a governor or an MC or an MP, what are the issues I should look at in terms of evaluating? Do I have a criteria? For example, is it character? Is it integrity? Is it competence? Is it uh, qualifications? What am I supposed to, uh, to look at? I know we'll come with all these issues. Uh, so I said NASA has seven uh, point plan. I'm sure Jubilee will also come up with something. I think last time they had about uh, three of those. But at the end of the day, it's the feeling among the people. And I said especially the marginalized communities or the smaller communities. Do we feel that Jubilee 
uh, has been taking care of us and I, we think that for the next five years uh, our interests are best taken care of and if you look at Jubilee that is actually what they are trying, trying to do they are trying to reach out to the smaller communities and showing them that they have a stake in government and that they should actually cast their lot with Jubilee on the other hand for opposition is telling the people now that you are disgruntled and you are unhappy with the way things have been we want change but you have to remember Fred is still a bit early uh, yes. the campaigns have not officially uh, kicked in. Once that happens, the messages will start uh, uh, defining itself. I know in 2007 and 2013 we tried the old versus uh, uh, young. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see Vijana versus Waze. In a sense, of course, it played, uh, you know, it helped in places like uh, Rift Valley. But right now, again, at the end of the day, whose message presents the best option for me as a young person or as a Kenyan uh, in terms of how I feel the next five years should be. And what message exactly that is. And we want to wrap up. I'll give you each a chance to say something uh, brief as we wrap up. Do we, is it possible that this time around we will just have the real issues? We'll end up talking about the high cost of living, corruption, and not things that do not really affect the common manichi directly. The ICC did not affect the common manichi directly. But this time around, if we lack something equivalent to the ICC problem, do you think it is an opportunity for Kenyans to actually elect leaders based on some of these real issues? Let's start with you, Joy. Based on the nominations, I think Kenyans have come to a place where they are a lot more inquisitive about what is being put on the table by the different candidates and based also on the voting patterns especially in areas where we've seen very young candidates the areas we've seen um, people who are quote unquote not the obvious suspects they're the ones who are common mananchi is a watchman is a cook we have seen a shift where people are listening to the messaging a lot more and so i would imagine that the discussion now would have a lot more issue-based discussion rather than just attacking personalities or making generalities or appealing to common sensibilities. Okay, thank you, Joe. But, but mm -hmm. there's something that uh, Kamau said that I wanted to add something on. When tracking inclusivity, and you discussed in the previous segment, there's also the women constituency that we are not looking at as a particular constituency. But the very many women, especially those of us who have been lobbying about the two-thirds gender rule, we will be looking to see how the parliament responds in the next few days regarding the gender bill. If it does not happen, that will become a question that at least the women will be trying to push forward mm -hmm. during this campaign. So it may become one of those issues that would be emergent towards the end rather than at this point in time because now there's still something in the offing. So one of the questions that we will see being discussed is how is the party proposing to take power going to handle the question about including women mm -hmm. according to the constitution on the table when it comes to leadership. So that's something we're going to see. Okay. And I'm personally going to campaign towards. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all the best with that. Uh, Bonke, final words? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I want our politicians to take this responsibility. If we create a violent environment, I mean, it has to scare investors. No investor can invest his money in this country. When Nairobi City is full of tear gas and people are running up and down, police are killing people and all that, because any any businessman would go to a peaceful environment for his business because these are all these are people who have their personal interests as far as business uh, are concerned the issue of economy actually we faced a lot of challenges investors are some are uh, wrapping their stuff and going back because of the indication they've seen since last year opposition were on the street with the one inch striking all over let us have issue-based politics go to one inch share with them what you believe in and uh, this time round, I want our politicians, let us just challenge each other intellectually and based on ideological differences, but not politics of inciting other communities, mm -hmm. politics of abusing people, politics of using disparate young Kenyans to attack other communities. Okay. Finally, Dr. Sam Kamau. Well, by my closing remarks, uh, I would want to address Wanjiko. I think uh, in the nomination exercise, we have discovered that uh, the ordinary person has a lot of power and this is the only time we'll get politicians talking to us directly. I think uh, Wanjiko should exercise uh, their vote uh, very carefully by evaluating the leaders who are coming, the kind of message they are bringing. Should not focus on people who are quick to give handouts but people who are articulating a vision that is generally workable. The second thing of course is to the politicians. I think from the discussion that is coming up, 
the issues are still not very clear, so the politicians have to define their message, what exactly they are telling or they are selling uh, to Anjiko. And finally, uh, to the media, I think we have to elevate the quality of debate so that we just don't focus on personalities and maybe communities and evaluate politics just on the basis of ethnic numbers. But let's interrogate the issues. Let us see what are the issues should actually that should uh, could directly impact uh, the life of Mwanainchi Wakawaida, that is Wanchiko. So we should, get, in a sense, try to look deeper beyond just the numbers and say that the cost of living is high. Let's interrogate what are the issues, what are the practical uh, solutions in this. Thank you. Okay. 91 days to the next general elections. These are the real conversations we're having right here on Citizen TV, Citizen Extra. Thank you so much, Joy Mdivo, political analyst, uh, Dr. Sam Kamau, and Bonke Komwai, political analyst, helping us understand the issues as they are, are three months to the general elections. My name is Fred Indimuli. Time now for me to exit studio and uh, pave uh, way for my colleague, Salim Swale, who will take you through more discussions on the Swahili version of Citizen Extra. Good afternoon.